Let me welcome Dr. Bina Tangappan. Uh, she will be speaking on pseudo exfoliation glaucoma. Bina, Bina, Dr. Bina Tangappan is a professor at RIO Trivandrum and with a uh, anti glaucoma uh, specialist also. And over to you, ma'am. Uh, good morning to all of you. At the outset, I'd like to thank uh, the organizers of KSOS and my dear friend Roshni for giving me this uh, opportunity to talk on the topic pseudo-exfoliation syndrome and glaucoma. Uh, pseudo-exfoliation glaucoma is the most common identifiable cause of open angle glaucoma worldwide. It's more aggressive and a rapidly progressive condition than primary open angle glaucoma. It's basically a stress-related condition, systemic condition, characterized by deposition of pseudo-exfoliative material within the anterior segment of the eye and other body tissues, giving rise to various ocular and extraocular manifestations. So I'll be discussing a particular case here, and as we go through it, I'll be discussing the various essential and the practical aspects related to this particular condition. This 65-year-old uh, male had uh, presented to our hospital from referral hospital as a case of primary open angle glaucoma and was on anti-glaucoma medication for the past two years. Ocular examination revealed right eye visual acuity of counting fingers 1 meter. Uh, rest of the anterior segment was normal except for nucleus sclerosis of grade 3. Left eye examination visual acuity was hand movements and as you can see from the picture, there is uh, evident pseudo exfoliation present at the pupillary margin with loss of pigment at the pupillary rough with a relative afferent pupillary defect. There was nucleus sclerosis of grade 3 to 4 and there was evident phacodenosis. IOP bioplanation was right eye 44 and the left eye it was 50. Gonoscopy revealed a hyperpigmented procedure trap in all quadrants which was seen in both the eyes and there was a pigmented Schwalbe's line and Sampolesis line which is a wavy line of pigmentation just in front of the Schwalbe's line. So this is said to be a characteristic feature of pseudo exfoliation uh, syndrome and also in case of unilateral pseudo exfoliation always try to look at the other eye but other eye might show features of a hyperpigmented posterior trap. Uh, pupillary dilatation is very essential in these cases uh, as you can see left eye the pseudo exfoliation was evident but right eye interestingly in this patient it showed the zones which you see characteristically in, say, in case of pseudo exfoliation so here you can see the peripheral zone with the uh, radial striations now this is said to be the consistent finding in case of pseudo exfoliation syndrome so this is a classic picture which you usually see that is a target uh, sign or the bull sign which you see where you can see three zones where the inner zone corresponds to the uh, corresponds to the size of the pupil, the intermediate zone, clear zone, is due to the um, movement of the pupillary margin, which brushes off the uh, pseudo exfoliated material, and the peripheral zone is the consistent zone. So when you dilate the pupil, always look for evidence of early zonalopathy in such eyes. So what is evident is you can see that there, there can be an increase in the gap between the edge of the pupil and the uh, pupillary margin. Now this will be more evident if you ask the patient to look down or sideways. Again in this, so that's it. So again in these cases, uh, when you have a dense cataract and you cannot visualize the disc, uh, these can come of uh, is of some help in such that uh, you might get a, a, a relative size of the optic cup in such cases, though the edges of the disc may not be uh, of the cup may not be discernible. UBM is of very much importance here because you can detect pseudo exfoliative material on the zonules, which is an earlier sign. Apart from finding pseudo exfoliative material on the anterior lens capsule and the uh, central portion and the peripheral portion and all. Specular microscopy is of importance, especially if you are planning for a particular uh, any type of surgery in pseudo exfoliation cases. So the diagnosis was revised as a case of pseudo exfoliation glaucoma in both eyes with uh, optic uh, atrophy in the left eye and nucleus sclerosis in both eyes. So though both uh, the pseudo exfoliation syndrome and glaucoma may present clinically as an unilateral disease, about one third of these cases can get converted to bilateral disease over a period of 10 years. Study shows that about 30 to 40 percent of patients with a pseudo exfoliation syndrome develop glaucoma. So these are the management options which you have of which uh, coming to the medical management. Pseudo exfoliation syndrome and glaucoma shows a very poor response to medical treatment compared to primary open angle glaucoma. Remember the target IOP has to be kept much lower in cases of POAG uh, than in POAG. Uh, interestingly, they show a good response to prostaglandin analogs. 
again the response to monotherapy is very less you have to go for combined therapies fixed dose combination of any of the glaucoma medications which you usually use coming to the role of laser if you have occludable angles there is a role of laser iridotomy again a less common mechanism in this case of glaucoma is angle closure mechanism probably it may be due to the solar dialysis and you have an anterior movement of the lens and there is an increased lens thickness noted in these patients when you have an open angle there is a role of laser trabeculoplasty uh, selective laser trabeculoplasty is said to be effective uh, maybe it is because of the increased trabecular pigmentation and the absorption of laser energy uh, as uh, this was uh, shown by the light study uh, one of the common complication but encountered here is early iopic spikes but again this uh, is not much effective in indian sites compared to caucasian eyes coming to the role of surgery in advanced glaucomatous damage or high iop more than 30 filtering surgery especially trabeculectomy with uh, anti fibrotics is preferred and implantation of drainage devices only when it is a failed case we have limited studies there in early to moderate stage glaucomatous damage and when you have an iop less than 30 control with maximum tolerated medication there is a role of uh, minimally invasive glaucoma surgeries of which the recently uh, the uh, gone uh, the gat is emerging as an effective treatment option and as such we have again limited studies with relation to mix in pseudo exfoliation syndrome and glaucoma combined surgery is another option where you can go for cataract combined with trabeculectomy or you can combine with the gat procedure so coming back to this particular case patient was initially managed medically with uh, topical medications to bring down the iop and patient was planned for a combined surgery right eye trabeculectomy with mitomycin and cataract surgery with pci oil so again cataract surgery in pseudo exfoliation glaucoma this is a very challenging situation patient uh, you need the detailed counseling regarding the possible pre operative intra operative and post operative problems which might be encountered you can have poor pupillary dilatation to start with be ready with the pupil dilating devices the hooks or expanders or whatever you prefer whatever you prefer again corneal endotheliopathy you have to use generous viscoelastics and uh, cohesive subbet are preferred weak sonus is usually associated with this condition so minimize the stress on sonus during all steps of the cataract surgery start with a larger capsular axis use of capsule tension rings segments or capsular hooks depending upon the amount of ex uh, pseudo exfoliation which of the zonal dialysis which you have use of a three piece iol and again it's better to go for the capture method or uh, the iol trap technique where you put the haptics onto the sulcus and you can place the optic within the rexus margin post operatively you can expect a marked post op inflammation with fibrinous reaction so you have to aggressively treat with anti inflammatory steroids and nsaids fortunately in this case uh, the surgery had been, uh, gone uneventful with iol implantation and two months post op the vision had improved to 6 to 12 with a good functioning blep and patient was on regular follow up for about 2 years but after that until that time the iop was iop and the uh, was controlled and after that we lost the patient for follow up Two years later, the patient is presented with loss of vision in the right eye. Vision had dropped to hand movements, and the IOP was 22. As you can see in the right eye, the what had happened was there was a spontaneous uh, dislocation of the IOL in the back. The left eye vision had dropped to PL, and uh, uh, IOP was 30. so this is a late post op complication these patients you can have capsular contraction of fibrosis you can have spontaneous subluxation or even decentration of iol so what i'm planning to do is uh, removal of the iol with uh, thorough vitrectomy and a secondary iol implantation for which i might write need the help of a vitreoretinal surgeon so meanwhile i've just given a fakey correction for this patient where the vision had improved to 618 and patient is on multiple anti glaucoma medications especially in the left eye So three months post uh, uh, FAQ correction, patient is having stable IOPs and is on follow-up. So overall, the prognosis it has got a very rapid progression compared to PAGs. The IOP mean IOP tends to be higher in these patients with greater 24-hour IOP fluctuations. There is greater vulnerability of the optic nerve to damage in these eyes, and it is found that the neuroretinal rim damage is more diffuse here in contrast to the sectoral loss which you see in PAG. with greater facial feel loss and poor response to medication so overall it is a poor prognosis compared to poag so to conclude controlling glaucoma and pseudo exfoliation syndrome is very challenging patients have to be regularly followed up as a glaucoma suspects 
And because it's a more aggressive condition with increased risk of blindness, there's a need for early recognition and appropriate manage management which can help prevent the progression of vision loss. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. That was pseudo-exfoliation well explained.